Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening and welcome to another dynamic segment of Visionary Pulse. With me, your host Farzana Mariet, only on INX Prime Channel 345. So join me for the next 30 minutes as I take you on a journey where you will meet inspiring and empowering amazing visionaries, game changers and definitely change makers. Joining us this evening is a remarkable man who was known as South Africa's Superman. He is also the only master firewalker in South Africa. Extending a warm welcome this evening to Quervis, the Viking Fisser. Welcome to Visionary Plus. Alaikum salam, Frazak. <laughs> Thank you for having me here today. And I'm looking forward to sharing my story and being on this journey for the next 30 minutes with you. It's but just a pleasure having you. Quervis, tell our viewers, who is Quervis Fisser? Well, Quervis Fisser, first and foremost, is Quervis Fisser with a C. And I'm first and foremost an inspirational speaker. I've created a community in the world where I help people to walk over fire you know, 500 to 600 degrees Celsius of fire. So I get people to do an amazing things. Wow. And the other things that I love to do is I've created a community to help men. You know, I have a passion for helping men to inspire men to not give up in the world and to be become men of honor again. Wow. Okay, so you've touched on a lot of things. Something that really stood out is you help men. Yes. Um, you know, we always hear about women empowerment, helping women, assisting women. Touch a bit more about what it is that you do to assist men and empower men. What is that all about? I think the journey started, um, uh, there was two years uh, that it started, just before COVID. Okay. Um, I received the Men of Valor Award. All right. And it helped me so much to realize the importance of what men has in the society because there's so many things where men um, get left behind. And it's all about women so empowerment true. and looking after women. However, there's nothing for men. And I realized that, you know, men are struggling as well. Uh, one of the most the highest uh, rates of suicide is under men. Because men don't talk about their emotions. They don't talk about their feelings. They try to keep everything inside. And I realized after losing a few friends to suicide that something needs to be done. Yes. And so I created the community. And that's where the sort of the Viking came from as well. Because there's certain values of a Viking that is important that I like to share with the world. Absolutely. Okay. So... Quervis, regarding statistics, um, you know, in South Africa, you mentioned that a lot of men, you know, mo majority of the suicides are committed by men. What would you say in your expertise, in your experience, um, is one of the main reasons? Why do men not speak about what they're going through? W what, is, what is the issue here? From a young age, if I take my own life as well, we are brought up that cowboys don't cry. Men have to be strong. Men have to be, um, you know, leaders in the community and because of how the world has changed men are going through difficult times and it takes a lot of uh, emotional chains in a, in a man himself to be able to open up and so men don't open up now here's my philosophy it's like a dam right if you keep the water in and it never flows out what happens to that water stagnates it, it stagnates yes. and it becomes rotten right right everything dies now think about it when men don't talk about their emotions and it stays in it starts getting rotten. It starts that negative self-talk, that negative emotions start making the person sick. And sometimes the only way to help it is to talk about it because we need to get that water flowing out so that new water of new life can come in. And the challenge is men don't want to open their sluices to, uh, to let the water out. Do you say, or would you say, Corvus, that this problem emanates from early childhood where, you know, I've seen it a lot, um, you know, even though you may be just joking with your kids, oh, don't cry, boys, don't cry. Would you say that it, it emanates from the beginning, early childhood, where men are thought that I've got to stand up, I'm the man in the household, I, uh, men don't cry, I'm not allowed to cry. Would you state that it, it emanates from childhood or what is the... I think part from childhood and that ha can have an impact. And yes. I'm not a psychologist that can, uh, that, you know, that is expertise in that field. However, my experience is that the world has gotten to a place where there's so much more pressure on men. Yes. You know, women has been uplifted so much and men hasn't been. You know, if you think about it, a man can say certain things and can, will be attacked, you know, if he says something on social media. So men have so much more pressure in the workplace uh, because of, you know, equality and all of that. So all of that Absolutely. pressure comes in. And so a man can't be a man at home anymore because now, you know, if you take in the past, women never used to work, they stayed at home. Now today, women are empowered. They're also working. They also have careers. And so what is the purpose of being a man? You know, a man was supposed to provide, being the priest in the house, looking after the family. In a sense, he's lost his purpose. 
So okay. the men that is in that place have lost purpose and they don't know what their purpose in life is anymore. Wow, that is absolutely profound. So moving on to something else that is amazing and I think, you know, our viewers will really love this. Tell us a bit more about the adventure you undertook to climb Mount Kilimanjaro on crutches. Yeah. That is an inspiring story. How did you do that? We all have to have a purpose and a why in life. Yeah. And my journey started when my first son was born. And um, I get to the hospital and I can't even pick up my own son, Fazana. Can't even hold my own son. Never knew what the impact is. And the reason I couldn't hold my own son and pick him up is I was born as hemophilia. Now, hemophilia, for the viewers out there, is a bleeder. It means my blood doesn't clot. And so because of all of the bleedings over the years, my joints have disintegrated. Now, I don't oh. know if you can see here, my elbow can't go straight. I don't have elbows, and therefore I can't exercise. I inject myself there, that what they call a plasma, factor eight, to help. Okay. And because of all of the bleedings, I need to both get both my elbows replaced. I need to get my ankles fused. My reality at 2014 when I woke up one day is that I couldn't walk. And the doctor said, you have to get your ankles fused and replaced, otherwise you're going to never be able to walk again. And I was sitting there and remembering the journey of my son. Um, we were expecting our second child. Mm -hmm. And he drew a picture. And on that picture was two babies. And then one baby had a crossover. And he says, Dad, I don't like the little sister. I want a little brother that can play with me because you can't. And when he came to me, I had a crossover me. And he said, Dad, you are there to me. That was the catalyst that put me on the path of where I am. And then the second one was not being able to walk. You know, that year, it became a year that I was better and I had to crawl where I wanted to be. I had to be in a wheelchair. And this is where purpose is so important. I realized that I wanted to give up. I was one night sitting with a gun in my hand thinking, I can't do this. I was at the moment of giving up. Wow. And then I had a friend phoning me and he invited me to a, a weekend away. We walked on fire. And by walking on the fire, I know that anything is possible. He helped me to be able to walk over the fire. And I said that night, the guy that was facilitating gave me, say, Quibus, get a goal so big that it scares you. Wow. And okay. that night, I set the goal to climb a mountain by the name of Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa. And I started preparing. And I realized, reading a quote on that same path about Gandhi, that says, everything starts with a belief. Yes. That I'm becomes sure. our thoughts, that becomes our words, that leads to our action and our habits, becomes our values, and ultimately creates our destiny. I could change that belief. You know, even the reality was, the doctor said, Kubis, you will not be able to walk again. I knew I needed to change my beliefs, that I am possible. I can. And the only way I could do it is with my thoughts and my words, because life and death is in the power of the tongue. And... <laughs> That set me on the path on climbing Kilimanjaro. And I would love to share with you a little bit more because yes. it was an extreme so moment. more about that when we return after the break. So welcome back. You are tuned into Visionary Plus with your host, Farzana. And I am in conversation with Quibus Fissa. So Quibus, tell us a bit more about Kilimanjaro, your journey, and some of the challenges that you faced whilst summiting Kilimanjaro. Yeah, so Fazana, so my journey started with my kids and in 2017 my wife decided to divorce me and so it put me in again in another challenge. You know, we sometimes pray for God for wisdom and peace and patience. However, He doesn't give it to us easily. He gives it to us through experiences to get, to, to get us to learn those skills. Okay. And so I had to learn new skills. And so 2017 I set the goal of climbing Kilimanjaro in 2018. The year prior to that, there was a famous racing driver in South Africa that passed away on the mountain. Now, here comes the thing. Because I faced that challenge and consistently, you know, I'm 24-7 in pain. And it's okay. part of the human failure. And then getting divorced. I decided if Google, the driver, can die on the mountain, maybe the chances I can die as well. Was that the reason why that you summoned That was the one of the reasons. Okay. Because people won't think badly about it. <laughs> All right. However little that I know when I went to climb this mountain, it was not about climbing the mountain. It was the journey, the lessons I learned. You know, the realizing the importance of having a support structure. There's at one point we have to climb out the Paranka wall. They had to give me people, because I don't have the strength to pull myself up. 
Okay. They gave me two guides, the one to pull me up and one to push me up so that I don't fall. And I have to look down and there's a big drop and I have to put my life in other people's hands. And that taught me it's okay to share, it's okay to ask for help. And that's where it comes from for me to ask for help. I also remember on the last night that we had to summit this mountain. And we're starting at 9 o'clock and I'm the first to go. The rest starts at 11. So it's pitch black. It's dark minus 17 degrees celsius and we walk at one point i can't see anything and i'm looking down and i said to him i can't see i don't know where we are what should i do he says quibbis can you see your next step and i look down and i say yes i can so just focus on giving the next step and that was a great lesson for me because sometimes we only see what we want to see the the yes. negative the dark time we don't focus on the road ahead yeah yes. the journey so it's about keep moving forward and so just before the top, we're looking at the highest sunrise in Africa. Wow. And I'm sitting there, and it's the clouds are here, and the sun is coming up. And actually, that moment, I was giving up because I didn't have the strength. I was coughing. I had altitude sickness. I couldn't breathe. And sitting there, I gave up on that mountain. And my friend says, let's go down. I say, now you go climb this mountain for us. And he looks me in the eye. And he says, Kubis, just remember why you came to climb this mountain. Yes. And he gave me a hug. And I remember why. Because it was not only to die on the mountain, but it was also to inspire my kids that anything is possible. And that pushed to the top. On my way down, I almost died. And they had to carry me down. Oh, wow. But in my mind, I did die. I left my old self behind. All the negativity. Yes. Okay. I was basically reborn. And that's the one thing I've learned in my life. Apart from opening the sluices and the water to flow out, is to do experiences, you know, like Absolutely. walking on the fire yes. and walking, so that we can expand this mind to show us that anything is possible to never give up. And I climbed and I got to the top of my crutches. And, and that's my story to people is that no matter your excuses and what you're going through, if you just keep pushing forward and persevere, the sun will come up. Absolutely. I think you've touched on something so profound, Corbis. It's all about the mindset. I think our biggest asset is our mindset. If we can reset that to positivity, gratitude, and learn to always giving thanks, I think each of us will be able to, you know, achieve much more than we yes. actually set out to be. Definitely. Okay, so you co-authored um, a really something really amazing, and that is Extraordinary You, Volume 1, 2, and 3. Um, tell our viewers what is the book's about. Yeah, so it's extraordinary. It's the power of use. It's all about the mind thing. So it's when my journey started in 2014, after my difficult few years before that. And I realized there's some changes that happened in my life. And so me and a friend co-created these books talking about neuro-linguistic programming of the mind, how the mind works, and how to influence the mind. You know, basic things like the colors we use. Um, oh. Yeah, because... If you constantly in dark colors and surrounded by dark colors, okay. it brings your emotions down. It brings your mindset down. Right. If you're surrounded by bright colors, think about winter to summer. Now that spring is here, everyone is like, there's a new life exciting <laughs> because flowers yeah. are coming up, color is coming back. Even the movies we watch, even the music we listen to has an impact on our emotions. And if you understand that, you can impact your vibration. And the book was created for that to help people to realize to take your power back. And I'm actually now currently writing my memoir about my life that will include oh, Kilimanjaro. And so we're looking at launching that next year. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Okay, so Corbus, you've created um, or you've rather formed a program for empowering men. It's called Viking Wolf Pack. What is that all about? So the Wolf Pack is to create a community where men can come together and challenge each other and helping them to have a better life, to help them to have a place where they can feel safe and talk about it. But it's all focused on experiences. So just to find some of the experiences we had is, you know, because men get bored very easily, you know. And so we had events like a cigar and whiskey evening. And then there oh. was another one where there was um, a racetrack event at the uh, uh, a Swartkops racetrack where we went to go see Lamborghinis race so bringing that um, testosterone back to men right however you, we combine the experience with also a little bit of self-development and growth and getting men to connect and talk about things 
And so in the plans is to do fighting experiences, going to a boxing ring, doing ex a little bit of extreme stuff like that. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah. So like it, it, it's a, basically a retreat for men. Yes. So to speak. Yes. You know, to open up, to um, form a, some, a sort of a brotherhood. We talk with women empowerment. It's all about sisterhood. Yes. So it's like a brotherhood is created amongst men whereby they can, you know, form a type of a relationship with these men and come together and talk about problems, talk about issues yeah. that you may experience. That is something so amazing. Yes. So when is this held like? So it's held on a monthly basis. Okay. And uh, we're launching now again next month after the winter. And the nice thing, when the men join the community as well, we're busy designing a ring, so a specialized oh. Viking ring that they will receive when they join this community. So that, you know, when you look, you, you feel like you're of this <laughs> You belong, you, you belong. You belong, you're like okay. All just right. part of the brotherhood. You're part of a club, you know, this yes. almost secret VIP club. Brilliant. So, Corvus, tell me, 2013, you touched on, briefly touched on, um, you know, 2013, 2014, being... Uh, 2013, I specifically know that was a really, really tough year for you. Um, what, what, what have you been through in that year? What transpired? So a lot of things transpired at that time. One, because of my hemophilia, yes. I received, a, I got hepatitis C through the blood transfusions. And that is a disease of the liver. Okay. And so I had to go treatment for that. It's almost like um, cancer treatment. Oh. My hair fell out. I was shivering. It was, I would vomit. It was the most difficult year. At the same time, the do I st couldn't start it, couldn't walk. I had a difficulty with my joints. At the same time, uh, my second son was about to be born. My first son was drawing that letter. And at the same time, I left the family business to start this new career. And so suddenly, I couldn't because I was bedridden. I couldn't walk. So it felt like the whole world was crashing down on me. And in a sense, like I said earlier, it's when God actually taught me the skills that I needed to help other people. Okay, so more on that when we come back after the break. Welcome back to Visionary Pulse, and I'm your host, Farzana Mayat, in conversation with Quibus Fissa. So Quibus, you live by the word Maximus. Tell us what is that about? So it's, it's different hashtags that I combine in my life that has a meaning because I believe we need to anchor things in our life. Words are powerful. Okay. So one of them is whatever it takes. You know, you can't blame others if you don't achieve it. You know, you can't have excuses or justify. When I say I do whatever it takes, I need to do whatever it takes. There's no excuses. I take responsibility and accountability for my actions. The next one is live without regret. Wow. When was the last time you said to someone that you loved them? You know, most of us say we will do it tomorrow. Or you wanted to start that business. Oh, now I will start it tomorrow. The thing is, when you get 60, 70, 80, then it's too late. So my challenge is to the men out there is to say to your sons you love them, to your daughters you love them. It's not the easiest thing for men. However, men and even ladies, it's important your kids want to hear it. They don't want to see it, all of the gifts that you are buying them. They want to hear. And then secondly, they want to hug so that they know you really love them. That is so amazing. I think in today's fast-paced life that we all live, there's simply no excuse. It takes but two seconds to say, listen, I'm thinking about you. I love you. Yes. And action speaks louder than words or gifts. Yes. You know, monetary value surpasses. It doesn't surpass, um, you know, the emotional being that a kid feels when they're loved by their parents. So I think that is so, so amazing. And um, Corvus, where can our viewers get in touch with you, you know, should they want to contact you, especially our men that are watching right now? I'm on all social media. So it's easy. It's searching it with Quibus with, with a C. C. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> everyone will remember that. So it's Quibus with a C, QuibusFisser.com. Or you just search Quibus Fisser, the Viking. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, all over the place. So go out, connect with me. And then, you know, just reach out to me. I can put you on the list so for our next events. So to be invited to come and enjoy and, and experience it. No, I think that would be simply amazing. And we're going to be cutting through to something really amazing as well for our viewers to see live. I've never done this before, but I think, you know, uh, we can but try. I need to be the catapult to do something you're really amazing. And I think you're going to be assisting me. So tell me, you know, when we walk in class, um, what is that? Has that got to do with your mindset or what is it about? I would have loved to have the firewalk, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but today we have that the glass. I would not do. <laughs> 
the glass is broken bottles. Yes. So people think they have been treated. No, the more people walk on it, the more it gets broken. So it's real broken glass. But there's a few lessons. In, you know, apart from having a mind, you have to first have an intention why you want to do it. You know, because whenever you go through difficult times or challenges or opportunities, you can link it back. Say, if I can walk with a broken glass, I can do anything. The second thing is when we do the glass walk, you're going to walk, but you're going to start losing your balance because, yes. you know, you have to concentrate. And one of us will be next to you with your arm. And that teaches us it's okay to ask for help. Be my pillar. You know, in life we are not meant to be alone. We need to ask for help. Ask for help. Ask for people if they're okay. And then you walk in before you climb off. You're going to lift your feet and we're going to just check there's no pieces of glass towards on your feet. And the reason for that is we mustn't look down on the people that serves us, that looks after us to make this path easy. We need to be grateful for them. Because somewhere we're going to also serve others to their success. And it teaches us to serve. And that okay. is the lessons behind the glass wall. So there's a whole lot of lessons that is behind a simple thing. Like, you know, you can walk in glass. But it's, it has a lot to do with your emotional attachments and how you view life as such. Yeah. That is amazing. So tell me, when you did this first, how was it for you? It was the challenge because <laughs> they didn't want me to do it. You know, they didn't allow, you know, the doctors didn't want to say they're not going to approve it. Uh, the people that were facilitating it was like, you're a hemophiliac. A hemophiliac is a bleeder. Yes. If I get cut, I'm going to keep bleeding. And uh, I remember even the Kilimanjaro, the doctor didn't even want to sign it. However, Gandhi says everything starts with a belief. And it starts with our thoughts and our words. And so if I say I can't do it, then I'm not going to do it. And I believed I can do it. I'm healthy. Nothing will happen, right? I didn't say I don't want to get cut. No, I said my feet will be smooth and it will be nothing underneath there. They will be clean, get off. And, you know, you speak in the positive sense of what you want and not what you don't want. Wow. All right. So now we're going to be moving into a fun segment after the break. Okay, so we're going to be moving on to a really fun segment now. And this is where I ask you, um, I'd rather give you one word, Quibus. You've got to give me the first thing that comes to your mind when I give you this word, okay? So it's called crossfire. So the first word I'm going to give you is courage. Courage is we need courage in life to take on the most difficult times, right? Courage is learned through experiences, right? One thing that I say, if you in a fear-based, it closes off your frontal lobe so that you can't be courageous and creative, right? Because then you live below the line. And that's where okay. your negativity besides. When you are more positive, you can take more risk. And by taking more risk, you become more courageous and you can take on any challenge that is in front of you. So you can learn it yourself by constantly being above the line. Okay, fear? Fear. False evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing because real. Because the only place fear can exist is in our mind of our imagination that causing us to imagine things that are crazy. So oh. fear is not real. <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. I'm going to live by that. Motivation? Motivation. Motivation doesn't last. If you bath once, you can't stay clean <laughs> for the whole month. So man, motivation has to be a daily exercise in your life, in your whole life, to be motivated for the rest of your life. Regret? Regret is the one thing that most people will have because they think, I will do it tomorrow. Okay. I, I, I solely believe this, Gwob, is that procrastination has killed more dreams. Yes. You know, I think by procrastinating, we're just putting off the inevitable. We're gonna, we need to try... And make sure that whatever it is that we dream, we achieve. We only have today. Opportunities only come once. So if you don't take it today, don't complain tomorrow why you don't have the things you don't have. Because you were not willing to take the action to achieve it. Absolutely. So, Quibus, tell our viewers three things that nobody knows about you. I think you've got a lot of fans. You've got a lot of people that, you know, love you and follow you. But this is the visionary pulse. We touch on the pulse of things. So I'd like you to tell our viewers three things that nobody knows about Kubis Fissa. Nobody knows about Kubis Yes, Fissa. three things. <laughs> um, one is, I think I love movies. And okay. I love to spend time watching movies, uh, 80s music, uh, music and movies. That is my favorite, right? Okay. But most people don't see it because I don't have time always to do it. So when I have my spare time away, I do that, right? Okay. The second thing is... Uh, I think if I have to say it, you know, you, you're putting me on the spot a little bit. <laughs> so, but that's a good thing, right? Yeah. 
that I'm so longing to, to find the love of my life. I mean, that's always been a thing, you know, I've had relationships, but I want that partner to share my vision, my values, you know, my values of building a legacy, to leave a legacy behind, to create a freedom life and to travel the world. So I'm longing for that, but I don't tell that to people. You know, sometimes you just show to people everything is right, but in my heart, I'm looking for that. And I think the third thing that most people don't know is most people don't know I'm divorced. You know, I think people assume when I talk about my kids and my family that I'm still married. You're still married, yes. But I'm divorced, yeah. Okay, so those are the three things that nobody has ever known about Quivis Fissa. You can thank me later. Okay, so Quivis, um, I would like you to share before we, um, uh, you know, do the glass walking. Um, leave our viewers with something really, really important, and that's a motivational quote that you live by. I think that is something that everyone can attest to. We're all looking for some kind of inspiration. That is what Visionary Pulse is all about. And I'd like you to just share a motivational quote that you live by. Apart from the one that I shared about Gandhi that says everything starts with a belief that becomes your destiny, is there a quote that started this whole journey? And it's by Ochmandino. It says, I am here for a purpose. And that purpose is to grow into a mountain and not to sink into a grain of sand. Henceforth, I will apply all my efforts to grow into the highest mountain of all, and I will strain my potential until it cries for mercy. And that quote is about straining your potential that when this life is over, that you live to your full potential. Because we all have it. We all can achieve whatever we want. Just to leave the viewers behind. I had this dream to always to be able to play rugby and I could never play rugby. Okay. Right? But I didn't give up on the dream. That dream still came true, but just in a different way. I worked in the 2017 with a professional rugby team for a year. And I worked on their mindset and their culture. So that dream still came true, just in a different just way. Just in a different format, yes. Yes, but dreams can do come true. Do you believe in the power of manifestation? Powerful. Can I share with you another yes, story? Please. <laughs> so this guy is 25 years old, a young Muslim guy, and he just finished engineering because parents say, you have to go study, but his dream is he wants to be a pro footballer. Okay. So we convinced his parents to give him 12 months. And so on this 12 month journey, we're doing a lot of things. We're applying the power of the mind manifestation. Almost at the end of the 12 months, through the journey of meeting the right people, he got a pro contract to play in Georgia. So what is the chance of 12 months? People would <laughs> say to him, give up. Yes. And he didn't. And he created that reality. Wow. Speechless. So we're going to be doing the walking on the glass right now. And uh, I think, you know, what you've said is really, really amazing. And I think all our viewers can really attest to um, and really be inspired by your journey. So I, I'm, I'm really glad that you've given your details out where, you know, our viewers can get in touch with you and become a part of your retreats, your so-called brotherhood and your clubbing, uh, your club, so to speak, with, you know, men and the, the, the Viking um, that you have. Um, before we close off, Corbus, I'd like you to, you know, just tell our viewers something that is so powerful in today's day and age, and that is our viewers tend to, I'm not saying our viewers, I'm saying people tend to really want to give up very easily. You know, it's so easy to throw in the towel and say, you know what, it's not happening for me. This is not working for me. I'm giving up. What, what, what would your message be to people that are right now sitting in front of the TV and saying, you know what, uh, you know, there's nothing left for me. I just feel I need to give up right now. Um, what would your message be? I think it's a few things in this message. One is talk to someone. You know, there's a lot of uh, methods out there. You can do the phone call or speak to a friend, but speak to someone, right? Yes. Get it out, right? Because the moment you talk about it, you realize it's not as bad as it is and you can get through it. The second thing that is important is that you have to have a purpose. Find your purpose, a reason to live, and everything will fall in place. Find your why. Wow. So thank you so much, Gorbis. I want to thank you for joining us. And uh, we come to the end to another inspiring show of Visionary Pulse. Join us next week as we bring you another riveting, insightful, inspiring, and empowering guest. So this is Farzana Maya signing off on Visionary Pulse. And you continuously remember to adapt an attitude of gratitude. Mm -hmm.